everyone, and welcome to yet another online service. I hope you're all doing well and having a great week. I have three announcements for us. The first announcement is a reminder to youth leaders that we have our youth leader meeting today after small groups. The second announcement is for all of EM, next week we're going to be starting a brand new series on sex and relationships, which means it's super important that you get a form that I have uh, to give to your parents from your youth leaders this week, okay? So make sure you get that from them, uh, and then we're going to be starting that new series next week. The third announcement I have is just a reminder that we have an event coming up, our Zoom game night. That's on June 3rd at 7 o'clock. It's a Wednesday. It's going to be a night where we're just going to play a lot of competitive games. We're going to have lots of prizes. It'll be a lot of fun, so don't miss it. All right, Chelsea and I have some really great news this week. We adopted a puppy, and her name is Abaco, and I'll put up a picture here so you guys can see her. She's really cute. And so that's why I want to ask you guys this today. And if you are watching this live, you can fill out your answer in the chat and talk about it. Uh, if not, we'll also talk about it in our small group. So this is my question. During this quarantine, if you could adopt a pet, what would you adopt? A dog, a cat, or something else? And what would you name it? All right, I look forward to seeing your guys' answers to that question. All right, we have our video encouragement this week. It comes from Daniel. He's going to nominate somebody new for next week. Uh, so yeah, here's Daniel's video. What's up, guys? It's Daniel. Um, I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, so some stuff about my quarantine. I've been playing a lot of hockey. So I have this like fake ice mat that I bring outside. Um, you can just like carry, carry it around everywhere. Um, that's been really great. Um, I've been working out a lot and um, as you can see, I've been trying to grow out the stash, but I don't know, there's some progress there, but still have to go. Um, so with my relationship with God during quarantine, honestly, it's been really great. Um, I started reading the Bible and for you guys out there that are like, how did Daniel start reading the Bible? So it started off, um, I saw this one YouTube video and it's, the title is 25 year old has an encounter with um, heaven and hell. So it's where this guy, God takes him to hell and then has him experience it for about 15 minutes and then takes him to heaven and then has that experience for about 15 minutes as well. And then it's just amazing because like what he talks about is just, it just really opens your eyes and just tells you it's not a joke. like. God is real and we need to start reading and doing things for him right now and we can't wait, okay? That's like the biggest thing that I got from his message was you can't wait, start doing it now. So really, if you guys can't find yourself picking up a Bible or like just wanna listen to like amazing testimony, then you can go search this up. It's really great. I started reading the Bible after this, so I'm sure you guys will too. Um, so. I like even though it's really hard during quarantine I hope that you guys are just staying healthy trying to do everything you can um, stay active and honestly like I just hope that you guys are doing really well and really encourage you to watch this video so and I miss you guys honestly even though this quarantine experience has been great I kind of just wanted to go back to real life now I just want to go see everybody at church and you know have a nice worship on Sunday instead of researching videos um, man um, yeah so that's what I've been doing for quarantine I hope this thing blows over soon we can see each other thanks see you later to not pee in the house, not to chew our hands. I have so many scratches on my hands. Um, but, oh my goodness, she's just so stinking cute. But um, I'm just reminded that um, even though it's so simple, God does help us in, in our daily lives. Um, stuff that is light and not complex. Um, so I just want to remind you guys that 
anything you have going on in your life, give it all to God. You know, I, with this puppy, you know, I may get frustrated with her, but you know, I give it to God. And it does help, even though it seems so silly. But God wants to be part of your life, part of everything. And we just have to be willing to share that with Him. Like, you know, He's like our best friend, right? We would share everything with our best friend. So why not share it with God? So let's lift up our hands and our hearts. And let's praise our King.
Shadow you are.
God, we thank you for your overwhelming, never-ending, and your reckless love. And God, there really are no words that can fully describe the love you have for us. times, in our sad times, every minute of every day. Help us to rely on you, God, for those simple things that we experience every day. Because we know that nothing is too small for you. Nothing is too big for you. So I just pray that as Aaron comes up, that we open up our hearts and our ears to hear what you have to say to us today. And I pray that what you have to say to us today changes us and that we use what we've learned and apply it to our lives, God. We love you so much. So today we're going to finish our series that we've been working through this month called What's the Point? What we've been doing is we've been talking about the times in our lives when we feel indifferent towards God, asking that very question, what's the point? And it can be hard to know when we're in those seasons why we feel this way. And what we're going to see today is that our indifference that we feel can sometimes be because we've become too casual about God. Which is why in the passage we're going to read, Jesus gives us both a warning and an invitation to recognize our indifference and do something about it. But before we get into it, I invite you guys to bow your heads and let's pray and invite God into the space that we're in so that he can speak to us. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you this morning. Some of us have had busy and not so great weeks, while others have had nothing weeks or maybe even good weeks. But we know that each time we approach you here, there's something new for each of us to learn. And so we come with expectation that you will speak. Holy Spirit, we ask that you open our hearts to your word. Help us to be honest and eager to hear what you want to say to us today. We dedicate the space that we're in, wherever it is, to you and draw near to you now. Lord, I pray that you would use me to speak. May my words bring you glory and praise as we work through this passage together. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So, one thing that not everybody knows about me is that I'm actually very introverted. So people are usually shocked when I say that. They can't believe it, but it's true. I really like being alone. I love my alone time. I know lots of you are introverts, so you know what I'm talking about. Um, but I love my alone time so much so that sometimes when I get invited to things, I actually make up super silly excuses so that I don't have to go. <laughs> I've done this many times. Uh, but let's be honest, okay? Even you extroverts out there, we've all done this before. We've all done it at one point or another. Maybe it was a, a friend's birthday, a family gathering, or some other event that we didn't want to attend but didn't really have a reason not to go. You might have made up excuses like this. Oh, I have homework. Or, oh, my, my parents say I can't go. Or, or maybe even, oh, I have coronavirus, actually. <laughs> But I want to ask you guys this, okay? 
Uh, would you, or sorry, I want to ask you this: If you would go as far as to murder the person who invited you, okay? If you didn't want to go to this event, would you go as far as to murder the person who invited you? It's a ridiculous question. I know. Uh, I can't hear you answer, so I'm only going to assume that all of you said no to that question. Um, hopefully, none of you said yes. Uh, but in the passage that we're going to read, that's actually exactly what happens, okay? Jesus tells a parable about a king whose son is getting married, and the king hosts this wedding feast and invites those that are on the guest list to come. But the people who are invited not only make up super silly excuses, some even go as far to kill the servants that are delivering the invitation. <laughs> So obviously the king, you can imagine any of us getting mad if that happened, uh, the king gets mad and decides to then invite other people, random people that weren't on the guest list, uh, to the celebration. So Jesus uses this parable, which we'll see in just a second, to teach us something super important. He uses the parable to warn us about the dangers of being too casual when it comes to our walk with God. So... We're going to read this parable, and it's found in Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 to 14. So I invite you now to grab your Bibles, wherever you guys are, uh, pull it up on your phone, whatever it is, and uh, flip open to Matthew chapter 22, and, and we'll read it together. So I'll start in verse 1. It says this. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who've been invited that I've prepared my dinner. My oxen, fattened cattle have been butchered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his field, another to his business, and the rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those that I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone that you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. He asked, How did you get in here without wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. And then the king told the attendants, Tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. So this passage is, you know, a little bit interesting, um, but it serves as a warning, okay? It's Jesus giving a warning to the people that are listening to him, the people that are, he's teaching. So he tells this parable actually a week before his crucifixion. So this is what's happening during this week, which means that the conflict between Jesus and the religious leaders were at their highest point, okay? So you can imagine that's why Jesus' words here are a little bit harsh, these religious leaders that he was arguing and fighting with who wanted to kill Jesus were the ones who were actually supposed to be the closest and most in tune with God. And yet it was they who rejected Jesus, who was God himself. So Jesus is confronting them about it in this passage. Jesus is offering them the invitation of a lifetime to be a part of God's kingdom, which is what they've always wanted. These are people who were God's own chosen people, the Jews. And so Jesus is finally giving them this invitation to be a part of God's kingdom and experience salvation. Uh, it's as though they've been invited by a king, right? Uh, to attend the greatest party, greatest wedding you could ever imagine. See, being invited by a king you could imagine would be such a great honor. And that's what it's like when Jesus gives this invitation to them to have salvation. It would be super silly not to attend an event that the king invited you to. Some may even say it's totally senseless to decline. I, I, I want you to think of this. So today an equivalent would be like getting invited to dinner 
with your favorite celebrity, okay? I want you to imagine that for a second. And maybe even eating food that costs more than a Ferrari. So really good food. Making an excuse like, oh, um, I gotta give my dog a bath, or, oh, I gotta catch up on Grey's Anatomy, so I, I can't go. That would just be the lamest thing. Why would you make up such silly excuses not to go? Uh, if you were to make up these excuses, it would show that you didn't really care about the celebrity or this honor that it was to, to go out and do this, uh, that you had become maybe casual and, and you uh, were too casual about something that you shouldn't have been casual about. And so it's a no-brainer that this would be like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. If this were to happen, it would be something incredible uh, and something so amazing that you'd be silly not to go or not to attend. And so this is what the invitation that Jesus offers us is like. He's offering us each a free gift that we don't deserve. Just like if, you know, some famous celebrity offered you an invitation, didn't even know you, and wanted to have dinner with you, you'd be like, what did I do to, like, earn this, right? Uh, Jesus offers us a free gift to be part of God's kingdom. He's offering us this incredible experience of having our sin completely forgiven and done away with. He's offering us the transforming chance to know God in a personal and life-giving relationship. And he's offering us a place in God's kingdom. One that we, don't only, we not only experience here and now, but we also get to experience forever in the next life. And so this is the message that Jesus delivered to God's own people first, the Jews in this passage. Yet God's very own people rejected it. The ones who were supposed to be the closest to God proved that they didn't really care all that much. So God had no choice but to extend this invitation then to anyone who would hear and accept it. So you might be wondering at this point, well, why? Why did God's people, God's very own people, the Jews, reject Jesus? Well, they rejected Jesus because, again, they had become casual with God. They'd become more concerned about themselves and their own lives. See, the Jews in, in Jesus' day, they were still following the law and, you know, doing the things that Jews were supposed to do. But they, even though they were doing the right things on the outside, their hearts weren't for God. They weren't open to God. And this is why they rejected Jesus. Jesus told them then that if they wanted to be a part of God's kingdom, then they would have to surrender to him as Lord acknowledge their sin and their selfishness, and then put their faith in him. But the Jews didn't like that. They didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to surrender. They didn't want to change their lives. Some even got so angry with the things that Jesus was saying that they went out and they killed him. They literally killed him. So the problem was that the religious leaders... They were physically close to the things of God all the time, but they were absent from God himself. So Jesus' parable then serves as a wake-up call. And it might serve as a wake-up call to some of us who have also become casual about God. Jesus says at the very end in verse 14, he says, For many are invited, but few are chosen. So this means that it's, it is possible to be around church, be around the services, activities, and the things of God, and yet still not know God. This is what Jesus was getting at in the parable with the man who attended the wedding or the king's party, but didn't have the proper wedding attire or clothes on. This guy is, is, is perhaps something that we would call like a wedding crasher today, okay? These are people who find out when and where a wedding is, uh, and they pretend to be an invited guest there. And they do this so that they can either steal cards or gifts or just enjoy a, a free meal. And it actually happens more often than you think. You may think, well, does that actually happen? It does. And in fact, as recently as 2018, a woman actually got arrested in the United States for stealing thousands of dollars worth of gift cards from a wedding that she was not invited to nor knew anybody. <laughs> So you could probably imagine if this were to happen at your wedding or your friend's wedding, you'd be really mad, right? And it gives us a glimpse of what God is saying about guests who try to get into his kingdom and the celebration of Jesus who don't actually know him. 
See, sometimes we can be around the things of God and even have heard the gospel a hundred times and still not know Jesus. I've heard a saying before that goes like this. It says, being in church makes you a Christian as much as sitting in a garage makes you a car. <laughs> See, being around the things of God, it doesn't cut it. Jesus wants us to experience him personally. He wants to clothe us with his righteousness and transform us into his likeness, giving us those wedding garments for free and opening this door to his kingdom and the celebration of what he's done. But we can't receive that gift unless we truly accept Christ into our lives and our hearts. So even in my life, I had heard the Jesus message many times before I had ever become a Christian. I was even a part of a youth group for years before I truly accepted Jesus into my life. I was the guy in normal clothes at the wedding banquet, except I, I wore like metal t-shirts and, and sweaters. <laughs> and I thought I was a Christian because I went to church and was part of a youth group and read my Bible sometimes and even told others that I was Christian. But one day I realized that even though I had heard the gospel a hundred times and, and could even recite it myself, I had never truly taken that uh, step towards truly surrendering my life to him. So one day at a youth conference, I heard the Jesus message for the hundredth and first time. And it was that moment that things became more real to me than ever before. It was then that the Holy Spirit broke through my pride and the walls of my selfishness and completely changed my life. And that's when I moved from being out of place. Even though I was around the things of God, I moved from being out of place to experiencing true celebration. The true celebration of knowing Jesus as my personal Savior. So I'm going to invite Chelsea up as we close our sermon today. But this parable that Jesus tells us, this parable is actually a warning about rejecting this offer of grace. It's not only a warning though, it's also an invitation. See, Jesus is giving and offering this invitation to be part of the greatest celebration that will ever take place. God tells us that he has a wedding feast prepared for those who love him. Now, if this doesn't motivate those who already know Jesus to not be so casual about him, then I, I don't know what will. This warning is not meant to cause people who do know Jesus to doubt themselves. But it's actually meant to awaken some of us who've heard the message a hundred times yet haven't come to know God personally. So, maybe that's you this morning. Maybe you've heard it all a hundred times, but you've been thinking that something has been missing. Maybe you've been near the things of God, but you want to know what it's like to truly experience Him in a real and personal way. For those who know Jesus, this should be a call not to be so casual, and it should motivate us to extend this invitation to this wedding banquet God has prepared for us, should motivate us to extend this invitation to those around us, those who yet don't know Jesus. But for those of us who are still part of the things of God, but don't know Jesus personally, maybe this can be the 101st time that you hear the gospel message. Jesus wants to share his righteousness with you, his life. So the question that I want to finish us, finish this sermon with is this. Will you receive the greatest invitation of all time and join in the eternal celebration of knowing Jesus? If your answer is yes, then I invite you to bow your heads and pray with me as we close. Lord, how amazing it is that you have 
clothed us with such high honor to know and worship you. We confess this morning that some of us have forgotten not only the seriousness, but also the incredibleness of the gospel message. So we repent this morning. We repent of becoming casual when it comes to following you. Help us, Lord, to rediscover the joy that it is to know you. Some of us may be listening today and feel as though we've been the one who has been around but hasn't truly come to know you. But may today be the day that everything changes. Lord, we look to you this morning. We put our faith in you as our Lord. We recognize our sinful ways and we surrender everything. Cover us in your love and forgive us, Lord Jesus. God, we ask that you would give us a taste of your heavenly banquet that you have prepared for us. You are our King, our Savior, our Lord. And we thank you. We pray this all in Jesus' name.
Lord Jesus, some of us have forgotten how good you are. We've been distracted by things in our lives, our work, the things that we find joy in, our families, our relationships, Lord. It's so easy sometimes to lose our focus. So we ask, remind us, remind us of the incredible calling you've placed on our lives. Remind us of the incredible gift it is to be able to say, I know you. Lord Jesus, I ask today for those of us who've been asking that question, what's the point? I pray that you would answer that question. I pray that you would show us that we have a place in your kingdom and that following you is a celebration like no other. It's a lifelong celebration and one that will continue into the afterlife. We get to serve an amazing and great God. We get to have a personal relationship. You are so involved in our lives and you want to even be involved in the little things like uh, having a puppy or eating our food or exercising, talking to our friends. God, you want to be involved. You want to share your life with us. And so we ask this morning, Lord, that you would reignite our faith, that you would show us the calling you've placed on our lives, the things that we've forgotten, how good it is to know you. As we go about our day today, Lord, I pray that we wouldn't be casual about you, and then instead we would know the true honor it is to be invited by the King into the kingdom. We thank you, Lord Jesus.